All right, everyone, let's continue on our discussion of the lumped element model for a transmission line. And what we're going to do now is derive the telegrapher equations or telegrapher's equations uh, using this model here. And all we're basically going to do is examine a tiny little sliver of our transmission line, which remember has some finite resistance, finite resi uh, inductance, some finite conductance, and a finite capacitance. And all I'm interested in is how does the voltage and the current change across this tiny little infinitesimal piece. And once we uh, derive some equations for that, we're going to see what happens when we squish this little delta z down to infinitesimally zero. And what we'll get is a pair of coupled partial differential equations. So starting with the voltage here, we're going to examine Kirchhoff's voltage law. And all that's gonna say is the voltage here is going to equal this voltage here minus whatever drops across these two components over here. And then we're gonna apply Kirchhoff's current law, which will simply say that the current entering into this node is equal to the sum of all of the currents leaving it. So let's start with Kirchhoff's voltage law, where we're gonna have a voltage here and we're gonna subtract some drops over here to get this voltage over here. So I say V of Z comma T, so that's this voltage here in blue, minus times the current times R prime delta Z, so that's just Ohm's law there, minus, I'm gonna say L prime delta Z times the time derivative of I of Z comma T, so that's the voltage drop across this little inductor here, and that is going to be equal to this voltage on the right, Z plus delta Z comma T. And so I start here, I lose some voltage, and I lose some voltage, and then I get a new voltage at this node over here. So Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now we're just going to apply Kirchhoff's current law. So you look at this, and I have some current entering this node here, I of uh, Z comma T, and then there's going to be a little bit leaving here, and a le little bit leaving there, and then some more leaving over there. So the current in is equal to the current out. So I of z comma t is equal to, so there's some current leaving here. When you notice we're expressing it as conductance, which is the inverse of uh, resistance. So I'm gonna get g prime delta z, so that's a z, times v of z plus delta z comma t. So that's this current here. And then another bit leaving over here. So that's c prime times the time derivative v of z plus delta z comma t and then of course I get some current leaving out the other side z plus delta z comma t like so so that is Kirchhoff's current law <clears throat> so now all we're going to do is rearrange these two expressions okay and I need to get a finite difference expression representing the change in voltage and the change in current as a function of these parameters here so I'm going to take the voltage, move it over here, and then I'm going to divide everything by delta z. And then same thing over here. I'm going to move this current over here and rearrange some terms while dividing by delta z. Oops, so I left off my delta z here. So c prime delta z. I hope you can see that. <laughs> okay, so let's rearrange the first guy here. So I'm going to get something like the following. V of z plus delta z comma t minus v of z comma t divided by delta z. So I just move this over and divide it. Is equal to negative r prime times i of z comma t minus l prime times the derivative of i of z comma t. Same thing, I'm gonna move this over here and then move these guys to the other side and rearrange and divide and you get a very similar looking expression. I of Z plus delta Z comma T minus I of Z comma T divided by delta Z is equal to 
So these guys are going to move to the other side and flip flop. So I get a negative g prime v of z plus delta z comma t minus c prime times the time derivative of v of z plus delta z comma t, like so. So these are the equations that are interesting right here. Again, you notice we just took the lumped element model, we just applied Kirchhoff's laws and did a little bit of rearranging, and we got a little bit of a, an interesting parallelism going on here. But in particular, these expressions over here are interesting. These are called finite difference equ expression, or finite differences. Okay. So remember, if I take the limit as delta z approaches zero, then these finite differences are going to turn into derivatives. So that implies a z derivative. So this finite difference will become a derivative by definition as I take the limit as z goes zero. So in other words, I'm going to squish, you know, originally this was gonna represent say one single millimeter of a big long transmission line. Now I'm gonna ask what happens as I squish that down to you know, a micron to a nanometer to a picometer and so on, getting infinitesimally close to zero. <clears throat> okay, so if I'm going to convert these expressions from finite differences into derivatives, everywhere we see uh, this term here, this is going to become a derivative with respect to z, and this is also going to be a derivative with respect to z. So what we'll get is our two very simple equations. I'm going to get the partial derivative of v with respect to z. So notice I'm gonna just leave off the dependence here, but if you want, in the back of your mind, you can remind yourself that v and i are technically functions of z and t. This is equal to negative r prime i minus l prime times partial derivative, because we have multiple variables now, of i, like so. And again, in the back of your head, i is actually a function of z and t, but at this point it's very common to just kind of keep that in the back of your head and not explicitly write it, otherwise it gets very clunky to have to keep writing that down. And likewise, we look back here, we have the second equation. I'm going to let this one turn into a derivative, and I'm gonna drop the functional dependence as well. And we get a very straightforward equation, partial with respect to z is equal to negative g prime v, that's a g, minus c prime times the partial v with respect to t, okay? So these equations are very, very important in transmission line theory. These are called the telegraphers, <laughs> or to, I like to say telegrapher because I think it th sounds cool, but it's probably correct to say telegraphers equations. Okay, and these are kind of like the, the fundamental governing equations for transmission line theory. Now, technically we could, technically we could just kind of leave it as is and get a lot of mileage out of these expressions. Uh, but what we really care about is what happens in sinusoidal steady state. So remember SSS, right? <laughs> this is a very uh, important condition. Sinusoidal steady state, okay? So this is the time domain. You can also think of this as a frequency domain. Uh, but all that means is in this condition is every time you see a partial with respect to t, a time derivative, that is going to turn into a j omega. <clears throat> so that should be pretty familiar. You've done this before. So all that means is these two time derivatives here turn into j omegas, and I can rewrite these equations just a little bit in the following form. So partial v with respect to z, and I'm now gonna put a little tilde on here, and this is just a mental reminder that this is now a phasor rather than a time domain expression. This is going to equal negative r prime, 
I'm gonna do a little bit of algebra here, algebra here, plus j omega l prime times i, and again, put a little tilde there. Then same thing down here, partial i with respect to z is equal to negative g prime plus j omega c prime times v. So these are now the telegrapher equations in their frequency domain or their phasor form. So phasor form, you can also hear phrases like frequency domain, like that. And that's in contrast to time domain up here. Or you can just call it sinusoidal steady state. Okay, so in the next lectures, we'll do some mathematical uh, operations on this to derive some very interesting facts.